Grand engulfment can happen in all sizes and kinds of storage facilities, from a small on-farm storage unit to large terminal elevators. Each size, type, and location presents its own sets of problems and circumstances. Grain engulfment incidences are not specific to grain storage facilities. They can also happen in transportation vehicles such as hopper bottom grain trailers and railroad cars. There are three basic ways grain engulfment usually happens. Flowing grain, grain bridge collapse, or vertical grain wall collapse. The first type of grain engulfment involves flowing grain. 77% of engulfment occurs while a bin is being unloaded. As long as the unloading system is not running or all unloading openings are closed, there is no grain movement. However, once the unloading system is engaged and the unloading gate is open, grain will start to move. A 10 inch auger can unload up to 65 bushels of grain per minute. The grain forms a funnel shaped cone on the top, pulling down anything on the surface. A worker has about two to three seconds to react. Within four to five seconds, your knees are covered. You'll be unable to free yourself without assistance due to the amount of pressure and friction the grain exerts around your legs. It won't be possible to simply step out of it. Once the grain is above a person's knees, it is physically impossible to free the legs without a lifeline or grabbing onto a support structure. While wearing a lifeline may not help you escape, it will keep you from being pulled further into the grain. Within 22 seconds, you will be covered and your chance of survival is very slim. No one should be allowed in a grain bin with moving grain. To prevent this, all receiving and unloading equipment needs to be tagged and locked out. Your facility must have procedures developed for bin entry. Employees need to follow those procedures in order to help ensure there will not be a grain engulfment. Another way people are trapped in grain is from grain bridging. When grain becomes wet and moldy, it can stick together. If the grain becomes a solid mass on the top surface, unloading it may create a cavity below. Bridging can occur anywhere in the bin. The surface will look solid and undisturbed, but it may hide a cavity that is dangerous to walk on. All employees who are allowed to enter a grain bin must wear a harness and lifeline. If the grain has been unloaded, there should be a dip or inverted cone on the surface. The best way to break up a known grain bridge is to address it from outside the bin. Grain quality management is critical in preventing a grain bridge. The third cause of engulfment is from grain wall collapse. Like grain bridges, grain walls are the result of wet grain that cakes into one large mass on the bin wall or another location within the bin. Freestanding columns of grain can also form. Entering a bin with a grain wall is extremely dangerous due to the potential of the wall collapsing. Employees should never work with grain above their heads. Emergency responders need to be aware that additional grain may be bridged or clinging to the wall. This could collapse on them during the rescue operation. An engulfment victim's greatest threat to their life is suffocation caused by the pressure of the grain against their chest and torso. As the victim exhales, the pressure of the grain continues to increase on their chest until they can no longer expand their lungs to inhale. This is known as compression asphyxia. Totally engulfed victims usually die from inhaling the grain, which blocks their airway and suffocates them. These type of victims rarely survive. Grain quality management is a key to safety because employees will not have to enter a bin. Good quality grain is considered dry enough to store. Wet grain will cause grain temperatures to rise, early insect infestation, mold, mildew, and grain clumping. These conditions cause the grain to stick together, leading to the formation of grain bridges and grain walls. Grain quality will not improve once it's in the bin. It will only continue to deteriorate unless it's monitored and steps are taken to reduce or eliminate the problem. An example of quality management is temperature monitoring. Grain harvested during the hot summer is put in the bin at temperatures close to the outside air temperature. Soon after harvest, aeration fans need to be run. This will equalize the grain temperature and moisture for storage through the summer months. If the outside temperature is cooler than the inside temperature, condensation will form. 
The condensation will drip from the roof panels onto the stored grain, leading to moisture problems inside the bin. The grain then needs to be cooled as the outside temperatures decrease to avoid the hot air mass in the bin from rising to the cooler roof. Properly sized and spaced aeration fans can move cooler outside air through the grain during the nighttime hours and exhaust the hot air to the outside. Another problem with warm grain is that the potential for insect activity increases any time the temperature of the grain exceeds 70 degrees Fahrenheit. A rise in temperature can also be an indicator of insect activity or deteriorating grain. Grain put in storage that has a lot of trash in it due to poor farming and harvesting practices can also cause storage problems. Not only is a trashy grain more conducive to insect infestation, but dockage has a tendency to collect at the discharge openings during removal where it can stop the flow of grain. Without a doubt, the more grain facilities can do to maintain good grain quality will eliminate the risk for employees needing to enter a bin. This would eliminate the risk of employee grain engulfment. Regardless how well the grain quality is managed, there are going to be times that employees will need to enter grain bins. Therefore, procedures must be developed to ensure safe entry. When entering a grain bin, an employee must wear a safety harness attached to a lifeline if there is a possibility the employee can sink more than waist deep in grain. As this demonstration shows, flowing grain quickly pulls the victim down to the point that escape is virtually impossible. Once the grain is above a person's knees, it is physically impossible to free the legs without a lifeline or grabbing onto a support structure. And when the victim is buried in grain up to his or her waist, there is no chance of self-rescue. Adequate lighting must be made available to employees before they enter the grain structure. Any lights used inside a grain bin need to be designated for use in areas where combustible dust may be present. These lights must be explosion proof. All employees entering a grain bin should have an observer present on the outside to monitor. And something goes wrong, it could be a long time before anybody knows there was a problem. There have been situations where no one realized an employee was trapped in a bin until a family member called to ask why their loved one never came home from work. The observer must have communication established with the person inside the grain bin, take? no matter how long the entrant plans on being inside that bin. He's going to take another five or ten minutes. This can be line of sight and verbal communications, or it can be two-way radio okay. communications. If electronic communication devices are to be used, they must be approved for use in explosive dust situations. The observer must also have a source of communication so he or she can quickly contact emergency responders for assistance in the event of an emergency. Grain handling facilities and the grain stored at them can present many challenges to maintain grain quality and safety. Understanding the risks involved with flowing grain and the danger associated with grain quality that has been allowed to deteriorate is essential for the safety of all employees and the profitability of the facility. Your health, safety, and your life is far more important than any grain in a bin. Please follow your safety rules, communicate with employees, and work together to make sure everybody goes home safe. Thank you and be careful.